Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You want the real? I got it. The truth, you know I'm about it. God given wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Things that you go through, we can talk about it. You stay in the same, I doubt it. They hey, welcome to my channel. I can't lie. It's 200 deep. It's 200 strong. Like, I am so excited. So, if you haven't hit subscribe, just hit subscribe. Like, we made it. Yes. Oh. Okay, y'all. So, now that I'm done celebrating, even though I'm about to just be celebrating the rest of the year. So, I'm going to be starting this series where I just start telling y'all my story. Start telling y'all my testimony because I feel like there's a certain level of I need the word of God. And then there's a certain level of I need your story. I need your testimony. I need what you did, how you did it, what you went through. Because I am literally struggling right now. So, for all of you partiers out there who are starting to feel like, dang, this is really... Um, not going very well with my walk with Christ and you are struggling not to party. I understand. I feel you because that was me. I was that girl in the middle of the floor, my hands up. I was partying. I was, yeah, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. Mm. <laughs> that was me. So why not share my story with you guys? Because I don't party anymore and I'm okay with that. I think it's cool. Anyways, <laughs> hey, what's up? Welcome to K Danelle. What's up, subscribers? Hey, how you doing? <sighs> um, but <laughs> while you're grabbing your popcorn, when you get to college, things change. I mean, like, no matter what your foundation was when you were at home, things freaking change. And what I mean by that is, like, when I was in college, when I walked into college, I was an ordained minister. I had preached sermons. You know, I had a boyfriend. I had only had one boyfriend. Um, I was in church all my life. And like, when you get to college, things change, my friend. I didn't have nobody telling me what to do, what I couldn't do, when I had to go to sleep. You know, then, wait, 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 hold up. And then, like, me and my boyfriend had broke up. And all of a sudden, I can talk to boys. Bruh. And so, while I'm trying to navigate my life with Christ and my Christ walk and being a minister and you know, all these new boundaries and stuff that I need to create for myself. I'm two and a half hours away from home. I don't have the regular support that I have. I'm trying to find a church home, up at school, you know, make friends, deal with my own heartbreak and cope with that. So I joined some organizations, Gospel Choir, and I joined this other organization. It was for black women. And we put on events on campus and we did community service. And we also party like a lot. And so, you know, with me being heartbroken, partying was so easy for me to do. Like partying became a coping mechanism. And I think that's why I did it as much as I did because I was able to talk to boys. I was able to meet people because like when I was in high school, I was super shy. I was like really quiet. I didn't say much. When I got to college, I wanted to like recreate myself. And the organization that I was just talking about, there was different chapters at different schools. So not only did I party at my school or have connections to the parties at my school, I went and partied at other schools. So I had all these parties in rotation. My friends, their older siblings were in fraternities and they knew the football team and the basketball team. So. We have a ride to the parties, all the off-campus parties. We like, we just had so much access and in me trying to deal with a broken heart and not having a regular church home. I was just like, not where I needed to be at. Like I had this time in my life where my relationship with God was like on the back burner. And so in the midst of me going 
to these parties and stuff, I had started a Bible study. And like, this is the bad part. Like, I started this Bible study. I had joined the gospel choir. And so I had met some friends from there. And, you know, one night I had to pray for one of my friends. And I started talking to them about God afterwards. And they're just like, dang, Kayla, you know a lot about God. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And um, they're like, you should start a Bible study. So I'm like, hmm. You know what? I should. I want to share what I know. And so I'm teaching this Bible study in the midst of all this party I'm doing. So every Wednesday, you know, I'm preparing for Wednesday to teach this Bible study. And just as hard as I'm preparing to teach a Bible study, I'm preparing for these parties. Like I'm going shopping. It was ridiculous. Just the amount of partying I was doing, it was like I we became the plug. Me and my friends became the plug. Like anytime any of our friends from the other university would come to our parties. They would come stay in our room. They would pregame in our room. And I never drank or smoked because, okay, first of all, fun fact about Kayla. Kayla does not do barf. Kayla does not do throw up. I honestly don't know how I'm a nursing assistant. <laughs> I never drank because I couldn't get up, get over the throw up. And I never smoked because smoking to me is just really not cute. Like, even besides the moral aspect of it, smoking to me is not cute. A girl with a rolled up brown thing to her mouth. <laughs> no, lips black. No, like, my hair about to smell like weed. No, like, <laughs> it just wasn't something that was cute to me. I, you know, I didn't party like I was drinking and smoking, but I was at the party. And it just dawned on me like, Kayla, something is not right here. How are you not condoning drinking and smoking in your own personal life, but you're going into an atmosphere where people are doing it and you're okay with that? Like, how are you okay with that? How am I coming into an environment and not being an influencer, I'm being influenced. It was like there was so much potential that I was wasting while I was trying to go and fit in and, you know, deal with my heartbreak by partying and talking to boys and finding out, oh, Kayla, you're cute. Like, it was just too much that I was doing that did not have to do with God that I was wasting. The Lord gave me a strategy <laughs> because I was in deep, y'all. I was in deep. And he told me, you know, you need to share with your Bible study that you are done partying. So I wind up marching into Bible study. I told them, I said, y'all, I'm not partying no more. Because literally it was like, I'm partying with the same people I'm teaching to. And you just cannot do that. And I tell them to hold me accountable. And from then on, I did not party. Like I gave it up. It was just so crucial at that moment. I felt so much conviction within myself to really stand up for God. And if that meant I had to stand out, if that meant I had to be by myself, then that's what I was going to do. And that's what I did. After that, you know, we had some friends from another university coming and staying at our room. And one of the guys comes up to me. They're just like, Kayla, why are you not at the party? Like, why are you not going? Like, we about to have so much fun and you ain't about to be there with us. And I'm just like, bro, like, I wish I could go. But it was just like, within myself, it was like, no, Kayla, you stand firm on what you believe. I say, you know, for my moral reasoning, what I believe in, I am not going to be partying anymore. And they, they fully understood everything that I said. They respected it. And, you know, after that, even though it was hard for me to let it go initially, now it's just like, go to a party. Why? Like, I don't even have the desire to go to a party anymore. So since then, you know, when I was in college, my Bible study grew. It grew like crazy. Like, uh, people was asking me, Kayla, how do I stop partying? Because the Lord told me that I was going to be an example to my friends, not just with what I said in my Bible study, but with what I did with my actions. And people seeing that shift in my life, seeing me stop party, it was just like, whoa, she's serious about this. And so even though I lost a lot of friends, I gained a lot of real friends. It's been the greatest change in my life. Paul talks about, he counts as dung those things that he lost in his pursuit of Christ. Literally, he's saying, everything that I lost in me trying to go after God, it doesn't matter. Like, literally, it does not matter at all. It does not measure up to how glad, the joy that I get, the, the pleasure that it brings me to serve God in the way that I do. Not just hearing the word, but being a doer as well. So, you know, hopefully this encourages you um, because in that time after I stopped running from all the things that I was dealing with, all the things that I was trying to use party as a coping mechanism with. My heart got healed. You know, my relationship with God got stronger. You know, I realized school is for school. It's not to be here and be liked by everybody. But I realized the impact it makes when you decide to live for Christ and do it in your actions and not just say it. So...
<laughs> yeah, this is like the bare minimum of this story. There's so much stuff that I left out. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you need anything answered, please leave it below in a comment. And again, we reached 200 subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I love y'all. I will see y'all soon.